Hi everyone. In this video, I am going to walk you through the types of activity that companies engage in, but specifically I'm going to walk through it um, from the standpoint of classifying these activities on a company's statement of cash flows. Um, and so here we go. I'm going to start off with financing activities. Now, if you're familiar at all with the layout of a statement of cash flows, you know that it has three main sections. Those main sections align with the types of activities companies engage in. First up is operating activities, or specifically on the statement of cash flows, your operating cash flows. Next up are your investing cash flows. And lastly are your financing cash flows. Now, you'll notice here I'm starting with financing, so I'm actually going in the opposite order. I'm not doing that to confuse you. I'm doing that because when we think about building a business, the order of operations is typically finance the business, invest in the business, and then begin operating the business, right? So that's the kind of the order. Just know that when you put these activities on a statement of cash flows specifically, it reverses. Operations, then investing, then financing. So without further ado, let's just dive on in and talk about the various things that you'll see in these activities from a statement of cash flows perspective. First up, financing activities. Financing activities are basically transactions where you interact with your investors or your creditors. In other words, the people that own your company or the people that lend money to your company, the people that finance your company, right? Now, it does not matter whether you are receiving funds or you are paying funds. Either way, it's considered a financing activity. It's just one is a cash inflow, one is a cash outflow. And to give you an example of, 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 of kind of what you would see in here, um, specifically under funds received from investors or, or creditors, any debt that you borrow from a creditor, which then of course gets recorded as a liability on your balance sheet, or any money you receive from issuing stock to stockholders, which then shows up as, as equity on your uh, uh, balance sheet. So common stock, preferred stock, that sort of thing, versus your liabilities, your debt, your notes payable, your bonds payable, that sort of thing. All right. To the extent that later on you give some of that money back, you reduce your liability or you reduce your equity by returning something to your investors or creditors, that is also a financing activity. Okay, So you can repay the principal on your debt, which reduces that note payable or bond payable. Right? You can repurchase your stock, which creates treasury stock, which reduces equity. Or you could pay out dividends, which come out of your retained earnings, which also reduces equity. So basically, if you undo the original borrowings or the original ownership through a return of, of equity or a reduction of liability, that is also a financing activity. It's just an outflow instead of an inflow. Um, but again, the easiest way to think about it is transactions with investors and creditors. That's what your financing activities encompass. All right, moving on, investing activities. Now, notice how on the last slide I mentioned transactions with your investors or your creditors. Don't let doing transaction with investors sway you into thinking that those are investing activities, two different things. Transactions with your investors finance your business. Investing activities, as you see I have written here in bold, are funds paid to purchase or received from selling assets that can be used in business operations or to grow the business. Primarily, when we talk about investing activities, we are talking about PP&E, property, plant, and equipment, your fixed assets. Buying those fixed assets to expand your business, literally physically expand your business, or selling those assets, because again, it doesn't matter whether you're buying or selling, the cash is in, the cash is out, it's all related to this type of activity, this investing activity. Um, a lot of times you'll see these classified on statements of cash flows as capital expenditures. So if you see that phrase on a statement of cash flows, that's typically what it's referring to as PP&E transactions. So this is your buildings, your machines, vehicles, land, so forth and so on, right? All the things you need to physically grow your business are investing activities. You're investing in your business. However, you can grow your business in other ways. You can also invest in other companies. So again, an investing activity, not physically in your own expansion, but in getting a return or expanding through another company. That means you can buy the stock of other companies. So you literally are expanding your business by expanding its ownership of something else, right? Not physically expanding, but expanding ownership. So that's investing in, in, in investing activity or through the debt of other companies. Now, the debt of other companies, when you lend them money, you are investing in that company, not in the sense that you get ownership, 
but in the sense of you will earn interest. You will earn a return on that lent amount of money, or what's called a return on investment, ROI. Um, so it doesn't matter whether you are dealing in the stock of other companies or the debt of other companies, those are considered investment activities. Note, not to be confused with dealing with your own investors or your own stock. Your own investors, your own stock, those are ways to finance your business. Those are financing activities. All right, last up, operating activities. Now, operating activities are kind of the catch-all. And so you're going to see very broad definitions here, but I'm going to try to make it crystal clear of what you should expect to see in this area of activity on a statement of cash flows. It says, transactions conducted during the normal course of business. All right, that's very broad. You can think of tons of things that happen during the normal course of business. But guess what? They probably are all operating. A way to kind of narrow this down a little bit and really hone it in is things that usually lead to revenues or expenses being recorded. So transactions with your customers or transactions with your suppliers, which result in seeing things like accounts receivable and payable, sales and service revenue, cost of goods sold, so forth and so on, right? So things that lead to revenues or expenses tend to be operating activities. If you want to really get um, uh, not more narrow, but more specific, the determinants of net income and loss. Or another way to say this is items on the income statement. Okay, items on the income statement. Uh, if something is on the income statement, it is contributing to either revenue or expense. It is contributing to the net income or net loss of the company. Items on the income statement will be operating activities, okay? Now I'm gonna give you one other definition, and this is gonna hammer home why I did this in the order I did it in. Last definition is anything, I know that seems broad, but hold on, bear with me, anything not a financing or investing activity. Now, this, this phrase here, not in these exact words, but essentially in these words, is actually part of US GAAP, um, uh, official accounting guidance. Anything that's not financing or investing is considered operating. And here's why I showed it to you in the order I did. If you remember, financing, very specific set of transactions, dealing with your investors and creditors. Investing, very um, particular set of transactions, dealing with PP&E or investments in other companies. If you are not one of those, let's call it four things, you're an operating activity. It's the catch-all. Anything else is operating. So even if you can't remember everything in the operating, you can remember what's not operating and just trust that everything else is operating. All right, one last point to make before I call this a day. Um, there are a few investing and financing related activities that will be classified as operating activities because they affect net income. So remember what I said, if it's on the income statement, it's considered operating. But you can think of things like the interest that you receive um, from loaning money to somebody or the interest that you pay from a loan that you've taken out. Now, interest received from investments, you would think that would be an investing activity. Interest paid on the debt you've taken out, you'd think that would be a financing activity. Dividends received from investments, you'd think that's an investing activity, right? These are the, the, this one and this one are returns on your investment. And then this one is paying back your creditors, right? Paying them the interest. But here's the deal. These items affect net income. They are revenues and expenses on your income statement. And so even though they look like they should go in other sections, because they're on the income statement, these are all going to be part of operating activities. Now, I have one last question here just for your food for thought. Notice we have interest received, interest paid, dividends received. Why aren't dividends paid to stockholders also included in this exception list? Well, here's the deal. Dividends paid, if you recall, we have that on our financing slide. Dividends paid don't go on the income statement. Dividends paid come out of retained earnings. They don't affect net income. And therefore, they don't fall under this exception, right? The only reason these are exceptions is because they go on the income statement. Dividends paid do not. Therefore, dividends paid remains a financing activity. 
All right, that was it for your um, economic activity from the viewpoint of a statement of cash flows. Remember, statement of cash flows goes operating, then investing, then financing, so opposite of the order we went through them in, but hopefully this sheds some light on what you should expect to see in each one. Anyway, thanks for watching. Hope you found it helpful, and please join me for another video.